Welcome. So we, you, we are here in the, to present you the uh, new uh, Contour UA system from MBDA. Uh, so the purpose is to manage the full scope of the existing threat, starting from the micro drones to uh, the tactical, even bigger drones. So that's why, uh, you know, as we are the, uh, the leader in, in, uh, in Europe of missile, we cover the full spectrum of, of all the missile, from uh, micro drones to anti-ballistic. So that's why the purpose was to develop a system that can deal with that uh, part of a uh, target, which is very pregnant now. So the, the idea is to have something very flexible that you can either deploy like this in that configuration or pack into a vehicle if you need mobility. And <clears throat> because of the nature of the threat, uh, we need uh, an open architecture uh, using multi-sensor uh, design and multi-effector. So I, I will uh, go in detail. So main sensor of the system uh, is either one radar or a set of radars that you deploy on your perimeters. Uh, they will give the maximum information and tracks on the, uh, on, on the drones. And we add a passive sensor that will detect remote control from the pilot to the drone. So the interest of such a system is first, you detect the direction of the drone uh, second, you detect as well the direction of the pilot, so uh, you can intercept him uh, after. Uh, the additional information that gives a passive sensor is the uh, identification, because the, the sensor detects the, the message from the remote control, so the kind of protocol, compare the protocol with a library, and it can then provide an identification accurate because all drones have different protocols. And normally it's in open uh, source. Uh, DJI, the, the Chinese DJI company, gives the, uh, give the, um, the protocol. So. so it helps to identify, because the big problem is that in a, an area you will have unknown drone, but you will have probably uh, friendly drones. Drones from the fire brigades, drones from the police, drones from TV if you uh, have, let's say, uh, you, you are covering uh, an uh, event like a World F Football Cup, there will be many drones from the TV, so you are not going to shoot down a friendly drone like this. So it's very uh, paramount to identify and classify what is friend, just to focus on what is unknown and possibly hostile. So to confirm the first identification, so you see here in the scenario the yellow a pencil is the uh, direction uh, of the pilot, and the red one is the direction of drone. Uh, here, so you see uh, the, there is a classification that has been done. Uh, the operator is asking for laser um, engagement. Uh, so the, the turret will be automatically slewed on the direction of the, of the drone, and then uh, it, the, the operator using the turret will, be, will have the control to perform the engagement. So the system is using several solutions of engagement. You see those lines there. Uh, the, first, the first line is to, to slave camera in the direction to perform the visual identification. Second one with the kind of black kind of gun is the um, directive jammer. So that solution is interesting because first you focus the power in one direction so you can jam at a longer range. In addition, you prevent to jam everywhere because uh, uh, if you have other drones, you are gonna jam them so you need to focus on just one direction. The, when you face an attack from different uh, axes, you will have to, to jam on a 360 uh, envelope, so all around you, so we have jammer that will jam in every direction. Uh, if jamming is not effective and insufficient, we, have, uh, uh, we are using a kind of suicide drone, a small drone that is flying very fast, uh, something around 200 km per hour, uh, that will smash the drone just by speed and by kinetic uh, effect. The good thing is that it's working on the let's say, drones of that size, more or less, and there is no uh, explosive, there is nothing uh, dangerous, just the debris that will fall. So you can use it in a, 
populated area in a urban context is usable. Of course, you will have the, the debris falling down, but apart from this, there is no hazard in any case. So this next step, if the, the jamming doesn't work, but you have the, uh, the, the suicide drone to perform the, the intercept. Uh, in addition, as a, just a higher uh, solution of engagement, you have the laser. Uh, if you face a pack of drones, a swarm of drones, then uh, we are working on a solution. We are teaming up with uh, some company making HPM generator, so high power microwave that will create a very uh, high, impact, high power energy that will normally supposed to burn the uh, electronic components inside, so the drone will fall. Uh, and at the very end, we have the Mistral missile, uh, the, N the, first, the third version, the Mistral 3, is the very last generation missile that you, you have in Cyprus. Uh, th this missile is extremely effective uh, and because of its last uh, technology level sensor it's capable to have a, a lock on a very small signature, so very small object. Uh, even electric drone can um, create some heat uh, sufficient for the seeker to lock on. So uh, of course not do those drones but it would not make sense to shoot a Mistral on, on that size, but maybe loitering munitions of that size, it's okay. So it gives to the um, defense the full scope of uh, solution to adapt to context. So the system that you see here, which is deployed, uh, can be completely packed and uh, on board the vehicle. So you have the flexibility to have something mobile. And if you have a long duration mission, several months, for instance, you protect uh, uh, strategic assets like uh, an airbase, like a uh, uh, government facility or any, anything, you can deploy uh, all the sensors and effectors are remotely controlled by wires, by any solution, and you can operate with minimum operators. So just two, even one in a, in a low uh, level of, uh, of, uh, of threat. Uh, so uh, you have seen the system uh, deployed on, on the tent. So the, the whole the components are exactly there. So you see the radars, these are the, the boxes that you see at each square. So that perform a 360 degree uh, detection. Uh, you have on the mast the passive sensor, as well as on the middle uh, you have the, the jammer, so omnidirectional jammer. Uh, you see the laser turret there. And uh, for the, the, the two boxes that are on the rear, in the middle, that you see there, are uh, the, the boxes to contain the um, suicide drones, the hit to kill drone. So you can pack four or more inside those boxes. And on front, you have the optronics as well as on the, on the turret, as well as the uh, 40 millimeter grenade launcher that is dedicated more for the uh, self-protection on the ground, but could, could be used against drones as well. So all the, the vehicle is completely autonomous, but uh, you have a, the command and control, the LICON command and control there, that can control the uh, Atlas vehicle uh, with a four, uh, four missile turret launcher. And the laptops that you have seen inside the tent are exactly there. So you can see this one. is the uh, tactical situation management. On the other seat, you have the effector management. On the front seat, you have the turret management. And you can deploy several vehicles on, the, uh, on an area. They will uh, connect together in order to exchange situation. You can connect as well uh, Mistral vehicles to have the full bubble from the uh, jamming to Mistral 3 uh, effectors. Thus, uh, the, 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 uh, the C2, so the, the Licon C2, can even be connected to a, a TOC from a larger system, so from a VLMICA or VLMICA new generation system, uh, in order to provide a, a multi layer bubble to protect a, a large, larger area. So, so we have seen the, the command and control uh, inside the tent. So you see here the different sensor for real. So we, we have tested several. Uh, this one 
uh, is using a NISA technology. So you, the detection uh, coverage is around 80 degrees on, on, uh, on uh, azimuth. So you see here, so to cover 360 degrees, you need four antennas like this. This is exactly the same that uh, are deployed or mounted on the, um, on the vehicle there. Uh, you see on the feet there just uh, below is the passive sensor detector. So there are several types. Uh, uh, this one is the same as you have on the vehicle, but all the antennas has been packed in a group of, uh, of uh, uh, this, like this. Uh, so it, this solution is more uh, tailored for use on vehicle. Uh, and you see on the roof, of the building camera which is on on the on the left so the that is remotely operated from the command and control and you see the jammer so the directive jammer here which is on the right uh, with the, that kind of uh, black gun that is remotely controlled uh, from the the inside with the command and control on the left here you see our uh, it to kill drone so you see it it's uh, made by a small uh, company uh, in France and we are teaming up with them uh, and we take care about the guidance uh, system. So they are packed in, uh, in uh, that kind of container. So you see, this is the launcher and the, the container. So you see, this is like a mini missile. You have, uh, uh, so uh, it's, fly very, it's flying very fast and that will impact the, the target and with kinetic, kinetic energy you destroy the, uh, the target just by speed. So you have a data link between the launcher system and the drone and you have a sensor here that will lock on the target at, after a mid-course phase. So we can pack several uh, in the container like this. So you open the box and uh, they are, they are flying like this. And the last system is our Mistral 3 missile. Uh, you have the tablets from the, the chief of the launching uh, team. And, and here it's a man pad configuration with uh, just single tube, uh, launcher, camera. Uh, and uh, you can have the same configuration on a vehicle, which is there. So to, to end with the Mistral system, here is the, the top level uh, of the capability. It's uh, our new launcher, uh, so it's, it's called Atlas RC. RC stands for remote control. So you have seen the tripod, which is uh, man-operated. Here you have a turret with four Mistral and completely operated from the inside of the truck. Uh, and the, the, you see the big antenna, the, the launcher is connected to the command and control that will give the target designation. So uh, everything is centralized and uh, the, the LICORN system can manage several launchers, so depending on the configuration, but it, it can be up to 12 uh, launchers. So after target designation, so the, the, the launching operator is on the front and manage the, uh, the turret uh, working. So after it's the same missile, uh, you, you can, uh, so you have a camera, night and day camera that perform uh, identification and the tracking before locking the, uh, the secure of the missile.